Good morning, everyone. My name is Bill, and I am a biological scientist from University of Florida Gulf Coast Research and Education Center. My topic today is cultivar-dependent effects of exogenous gibralic acid on bug break induction and the yield of artichoke under subtropical climate conditions. Globe artichoke is an herbaceous perennial plant in the family Asteraceae. Originally, artichoke grows in the Mediterranean region. It was introduced to the United States in the 1800s. Currently, California has more than 99% of artichoke production in the US. According to USDA, the gross value of artichoke in the US is about $62.6 million in the year 2020. Artichoke has lots of health-promoting nutrients, such as vitamins, minerals, and especially antioxidants. You can find lots of artichoke-based dietary supplements available on the market. Most of the edible part of an artichoke is in its flower bud called heart, which is actually the receptacle of a flower. Obviously, a bigger size of the bud will make it more marketable. In most cases, the main head is the biggest you can get from an artichoke plant. The secondary heads are getting smaller. Generally speaking, you can get three to five flower buds for a fresh market of an artichoke plant. If you leave the flower bud unharvested in the field, it will grow into a flower. This is something you want to avoid, but I do see some people use the flower in their floral arrangement. In Florida, there is an increased interest in growing artichoke. Some growers are looking for alternative crops when they have challenges with the traditional Florida crops, such as citrus. Some growers are looking for new spring vegetables to grow. From a consumer perspective, more people are putting artichoke in their growth rate because of the health benefits in it carries. There are chefs telling us they want to put artichoke on their menu. Although our California takes most of artichoke production, there could be a potential niche market for Florida artichoke. The peak harvest season in California is from middle March to June, while in Florida, the first harvest is usually around middle February. And if we make good arrangement of the planting date, we might be able to produce some artichoke when it is low season in California. In terms of our disadvantages, there are not too many research done in the past. We have very little information about artichoke cultivars that are suitable for Florida climate. We know little about the potential pest and disease issues. And because in Florida, we grow artichoke annually, which is different from the perennial production in, Flor in California, we need to explore the best planting dates, irrigation, fertilization, and other cultural practices to grow artichoke in Florida. And because the crop is new to Florida, there is only fresh market for growers to sell their products, and no processing industry is established, which is another limitation. Above all of these, we are in subtropical climate and have fewer chilling hours compared to other parts of the states. Depending on the cultivar, artichoke needs cumulatively around 200 to 500 hours under 45 degrees Fahrenheit to initiate flower bud. But in Florida, especially middle to south Florida, the chilling hours are not sufficient. Taking the research center where this project was conducted as an example, 
it is 9B on the USDA plant hardness zone. For the past 10 years, the average chilling hours were 245 per year, which can cause very poor bud formation for some cultivars. There are several ways to overcome insufficient chilling hours in artichoke. In some studies, the artichoke seedlings are stored in the refrigerator for a certain period of time. But this method is taking a lot of storage space and utility cost. In our trial, we are testing gibralic acid, GA in short, to induce bud formation. GA is a plant growth regulator that can induce the expression of certain genes. These genes regulate flower bud initiation and are normally induced by low temperature. So to simplify, GA could have the same effect as sufficient chilling hours for artichoke, and it proved effective in some northern states to induce flower bud in artichoke. So the objective of this study was to test the effectiveness of exogenous GA on flower bud formation in artichoke in central Florida. The field experiment was conducted in the fall season of 2020 at University of Florida Gulf Coast Research and Education Center in Baum. Experiment followed a split plot design with six replications and two factors, with main factor being GA application, the subplot factor being cultivar. The name of the chemical is ProGIP-LV, which is one of the commercial formulations of GA that has already been registered for artichoke. GA spray happened on 60 and 74 days after transplanting at a rate of 37 grams per hectare, which is 15 grams per acre. Control plots received the same amount of water. We included three cultivars in this trial. Imperial Star and Green Globe Improved are popular cultivars in California. And Imperial Star has a lower chilling requirement based on the findings in literature. Green Queen is a newly released cultivar based on our earlier study. It has a high single bud yield, which in turn translates into a high potential for fresh market. Here is a picture of the experiment site. We used the same setting as tomato production, raised the planting bed with plastic mulch on top, drip tape irrigation. The row spacing is five feet and the in row spacing is 36 inches. This photo is showing my coworker Chris applying GA in the field using a CO2 backpack sprayer. For a larger acreage, growers could easily do it with a spray tractor. Here are some results. This graph is showing the timing of transplanting, bud initiation, and the first harvest of different treatments. All treatments were transplanted in late October. Without GA treatment, Green Globe Improved and Green Queen initiated the bud in early March, and the harvesting started late March or early April. The Imperial Star initiated bud around half a month earlier, making the first harvest happen in early March. When GA was applied, the budding and harvesting were accelerated for all cultivars. For Green Globe Improved, budding was 17 days earlier than control. First harvest was 21 days earlier than control. For Green Queen, budding was 19 days earlier than no GA treatment. First harvest was 27 days earlier than no GA treatment. 
for Imperial Star, budding was 14 days earlier than no GA treatment, first harvest 12 days earlier than no GA treatment, and the first harvest could happen as early as February. The next questions of interest would be, does GA improve budding percentage for any cultivar? How does this earliness in budding translate into yield? First, let's take a look at the budding percentage. Budding percentage is calculated as the number of plants initiating flower bud out of the total number of plants of a plot. There is a significant increase of budding percentage in Green Globe Improved and Green Queen. In Green Globe Improved, it jumped from 31% to 100%. In Green Queen, from 36% to 96%. In Imperial Star, by contrast, although the budding percentage increased from 96% to 100%, this a uh, minimum increase is not significant. For marketable yield, we have similar results. In Green Globe Improved, the yield jumped 277%, reaching 12 tons per hectare. And that is about 70% of the yield in California. In Green Queen, the yield increase was 202%, reaching 9.47 tons per hectare. No significant observations could be found in Imperial Star. When GA was applied, the marketable yield reached 9.3 tons per hectare. These results match the previous findings in the literature. Here are some take-home messages. In Florida, GA application speed up budding and harvesting, improve budding percentage and marketable yield, but this effect is cultivar dependent. Imperial Star has low channel requirement than other cultivars. Our future research will, will focus on optimizing the GA application program together with improving other aspects of cultural practices and we hope to get some good information to initiate artichoke in Florida. The funding of this study is Florida Department of Agriculture and Consumer Services. The artichoke seedlings were provided by Quick Starts in Ruskin, Florida. I want to thank my group members for their support and hard work. We'll see you in the Q&A session. Thank you.